Okay, we're looking at the 3.2 ready to start. And it's up here says a very common radical expression is a square root. One way to think of a square root is a number that will multiply itself to create a desired value. For example, root two is the number that will multiply itself to equal to. And in like manner, root 16 is the number that will multiply itself to equal 16. In this case, the value four because four times four equals 16. When the square root of a number is taken, you get a nice whole number value. Otherwise, an irrational number is produced. The same pattern holds true for other radicals, such as cubed roots, fourth roots, and so forth. So for example, the cubed root of eight is a number that will multiply itself three times to equal that eight. And we've been practicing this in class and taking some notes, so hopefully we're starting to get a feel for these radicals. Up here it gives you an example of how we break down 20 into factors of 4 times 5, which can then further break down to 2 times 2 times 5. This is called the prime factorization of a number, breaking it down into its smallest parts. And so <clears throat> we then look for pairs of numbers because it's a square root. We have an invisible index of 2 here. So we're going to look for pairs. Notice that there are two twos. So those two twos mean that a two can come out and a root five stays underneath. Okay, let's go check out an example just like that one, root 40. Root 40 can break down into four and 10. Maybe you thought of eight and five. Either way, we're breaking it down into its smallest parts. Four can become two times two and 10 can become 2 times 5. We then look for pairs of numbers because this is a square root. So a pair of 2's means that a 2 comes out front and the 2 times 5, there are no pairs for that. So those both stay underneath the radical. When they stay under the radical, those are factors. So we multiply them back out. 2 times 5 means root 10. So my final answer plus or minus 2 root 10. Next we have root 50. Root 50 is five times 10. Then we can further break down the 10 into five times two. <clears throat> and so then we look for a pair. A pair of fives means that a five can come out and the root two has no pair, so it stays underneath. Final answer, plus or minus five root two. On this next one, it's a cubed root of 16. So 16 is what times what? We still break it down into its smallest parts, just like we did on the one before. Eight can break down into four times two, or hopefully you know it's by this point, it's three twos, two times two times two. To double check if I've got these factors correct, I go two times two is four times two is eight times two is 16. I can multiply them back out and make sure I get the original value. Now, because I have an index of three this time, a cubed root, I'm looking for groups of three instead. So because I have three twos, a two can come out front and then whatever's left over inside stays inside. Final answer is two times the cubed root of three. Notice I have to write in that little index this time because it's a cubed root. All right, 72. What do you think of for factors of 72? Maybe you guys think of eight and nine first. That breaks down into two times two times two and three times three. And then we're looking for pairs because it's a square root. So I see a pair, hang on a sec. I see a pair of twos and I see a pair of threes. That means a two comes out front a3 comes out front, and this guy that's left over with no pair stays underneath. But what do those two factors do in front? Those two factors in front, since they're factors, they're multiplying. So my final answer for this one is 6 root 2, and because it's a square root, we say plus or minus 6 root 2. Fourth root of 81, we break down 81 into 9 times 9, or 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, because this is a fourth root, we're looking for groups of four. Since all there is is four threes, my answer for this one is just three. 
because it's an even index, we can also say plus or minus 3. 32 breaks down into 4 times 8, and 4 becomes 2 times 2, and 8 becomes 2 times 2 times 2. And so I've got a pair of 2's, so 1 2 is going to come out. But I've got another pair of 2's, so another 2 is going to come out. So a two comes out from the yellow pair, a two comes out from the green pair, and this guy's left over inside. <clears throat> and so my final answer for this one is four root two, because it's an even index, we could say plus or minus four root two. Fifth root of 160. Maybe you think of six, 160 as 16 times 10. 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times, that's it, like 4 times 4. And then 10 is 2 times 5. Because it's a fifth root, we're looking for groups of 5. Since there's 5 twos, we can bring a 2 out front. And then that 5 that has no group stays inside. Final answer is 2 times the fifth root of 5. Root 45 can be broken down into 9 times 5. Because it's a square root, we're going to break this down and look for pairs. 9 is 3 times 3 times that 5. We can see that there's a pair of 3's, so a 3 comes out and the root 5 stays under. Because it's a square root, we can say plus or minus 3 root 5 for the final answer. 54 is 9 times 6. Break that down further. 3 times 3 for the 9, and 3 times 2 for the 6. Because it's a cubed root, we're looking for groups of 3. So a3 comes out, and the 2 with no group stays inside. 3 times the cubed root of 2. So check on these final answers. See how you did. This is a skill that you're going to need not just this year, but a lot in Math 3. This is called simplifying radicals. When they're not perfect squares, we have to put it into a number that goes out front and a number that stays inside.